Thank you, Acting Speaker. And today I rise to contribute to the Transport Legislation Amendment Bill 2023. Uh, and I do want to make some reference to some comments that were made previously by the members for Bulleen and South West Coast um, in their reference to uh, the Allen Labor Government not looking after regional um, uh, constituents or passengers on our rail networks. And I've got to remind them that it's thanks to our $4 billion regional rail revival that on the Ballarat line, uh, an additional 135 services have been added, and of course, that includes trains every 20 minutes during the peak uh, peak times. And of course, since we've had the uh, rate cap, uh, it, we've had more than two million trips on the Ballarat, Ararat, Maryborough lines uh, since late March, and I think that's an amazing outcome. And I, I do believe that. We'll, we will be seeing some amazing figures come out through annual reports shortly, so we'll have to wait and see uh, when they're tabled. Um, I will come back to some of the things that's happened on the Ballarat line and the Melton line in reference to the, the members or in response to the members for Bulleen and South West Coast, but I do want to remind the opposition it was them that closed down regional rail lines, uh, and here they are having a go at us uh, over this bill and us not supporting uh, regional constituents and passengers uh, in uh, transporting them to and from their cities into Melbourne and back. Uh, so they clearly have short memories um, in regard to what they did to regional rail lines and I thank the BRAC's government for returning those lines and places like Maryborough and Ararat and Stall and places like that um, would probably not be the cities that they are today be, um, without the BRACS government returning those lines. But I want to come back to um, the Ballarat line and in particular the, the Melton component of the Ballarat line and I've just made reference to the, the, uh, the fare cap and uh, since March and about two million trips uh, since that time. But the Ballarat line was duplicated by this government um, and we're going to have a further upgrade of the Melton line, a $650 million further upgrade of the Melton line. Um, we'll be removing three level crossings, and that work has already started in Melton, uh, the geotechnical and surveying work, and that work has started, and one level crossing will be removed at Truganina in the seat of Koroit. Um, we're building a new Melton railway station. Uh, and of course, we've upgraded stations at Balan, Bacchus Marsh, Rockbank, Caroline Springs, and we built a new station at Cobblebank. So, uh, to criticise a government that's delivered all of that uh, since 2014, it's quite amazing, and there's more to be done. And I'm, I'm pleased to say I'm part of um, the previous Andrews government and now the Allen government, led by uh, Premier Allen, uh, to deliver all of these projects that we've committed to right across the state, but in particular. Uh, I'm pleased that there was an upgrade of the Ballarat line and in particular the Melton line and I know my constituents um, uh, are pleased with it. Of course, Acting Speaker, th this is an omnibus bill uh, and I'll only go to a few things uh, in regard to the reforms. I should also remind the opposition that on this side of the House we have 18 regional uh, MPs uh, compared to the opposition. I think there's eight on the other side uh, in this House uh, and I think we represent regional areas far greater uh, than the Conservatives do. Um, of course, this legislation is in essence enables a research trial to support evidence-based road safety policy, particularly with regard to medicinal cannabis, and it establishes um, a legislative framework for local governments to manage issues specific to vehicle sharing schemes and their impacts on amenity and accessibility. Of course, it's improving the road safety uh, outcomes by making updates and clarifications to the Road Safety Act. And finally, it supports the transport sector administration and regulation through um, reorganisation of transport sector agencies and alignment of regulatory schemes, information disclosure, reforms and other improvements to legislation. Acting Speaker, we're bringing about a road safety research trial that relates to uh, medicinal cannabis and, and fatigue and declares that um, specified um, provisions of the Road Safety Act or regulations or rules made under that Act do not apply or apply in varied form to participants. Uh, and of course here in this great state of Victoria, home of the mighty Hawth Hawthorne Hawks, uh, there exists a stringent zero tolerance legislative policy regarding um, THC and that's the primary psychoactive substance found 
in cannabis, especially concerning its presence in drivers. We've all seen the big drug buses on our highways, uh, and we, we've all seen the ads from TAC. Uh, but of course, it's important to acknowledge uh, that there is a growing chorus of voices advocating for change, and we know things need to change. And these calls for reform are coming not just from um, politicians, but also from patients in need, uh, who even uh, though they are patients, they have lives to, li to, um, to lead, and of course they have kids to take to school, they have jobs to go to, and also um, they're passionate advocates who, who have a deep concern for the welfare of our society, and uh, clearly uh, some of these people um, rely on medicinal cannabis to manage their day-to-day -day lives, uh, but also to live a full life uh, with not only their family, but with their friends. So, of course, understanding the complexities surrounding this issue on the existing legislation and also the proposed changes, it becomes evident that the perspectives of various stakeholders must be taken into account. Uh, public safety, individual rights and the well-being of those relying on cannabis for medicinal purposes are all crucial aspects of this, dis uh, this discourse um, that prioritises both safety and compassion in our society. And, of course, Cannabis arrests around the world uh, disproportionately affect minorities and it uh, is right that we begin to fix this issue. Of course, the fact is cannabis can be safe and can be used safely. Uh, and every drug on the PBS has warnings about what you can and can't do while taking it. Uh, and again, for an example, you shouldn't give Viagra to men with heart conditions. It's not a great idea to drive after you've taken anything with codeine, anxiety medications, anti-seizure drugs, some antidepressants. Um, and, it says, and it says so right there on the packet. And of course, cannabis should not be any different. Um, we all know someone who needs me uh, medicinal cannabis, um, whether you think you do or not. We all know someone whose life uh, and well-being is improved by uh, prescription uh, medicinal cannabis and obviously it's been proven to support people in need whether it be for pain relief or for other reasons uh, and the member for Pakenham alluded to a whole range of medical conditions where uh, they've been seen to improve because of um, access to medicinal cannabis. Uh, Evidence-based safety pilots are how we got uh, seat belts into cars here in Victoria uh, and that was a first for the Western world. And of course, if we cast our mind back to 1970, that I remember really well, um, when the government uh, introduced legislation for compulsory wearing of seatbelts. But of course, um, uh, 14 months later, all other Australian states followed suit, followed Victoria, uh, and seatbelt rates uh, increased to attain 90% by 1977. Uh, incidentally, though, the Baltic government forgot about kids in the back seat. Uh, and that came much later under the Kane Labor government in 1986. And, and of course, children need special restraints uh, uh, fitted in the vehicles uh, rather than just fitting into the adult seat belts. Uh, and of course, wearing seat belts properly um, leads to the saving of lives. And I've got to say, I, as, a param as an ex-paramedic, um, I did attend many vehicle accidents um, some years ago uh, where people did not wear seat belts. Uh, and in many of those occasions, that in my attendance at accidents, most of those people were ejected from their vehicles, um, sustaining serious injuries, and in some cases, some people were killed. So seatbelts clearly save lives, and that's been proven over the last 50-odd years in this state. And unfortunately, in recent times, we've seen a number of people that have been killed on the roads this year. Um, uh, a number of them were not wearing seatbelts, and that's very unfortunate. And I know. Uh, some members alluded to the fact of the state of the roads, but the highest incidence of deaths on the roads this year have been due to speed and the non-wearing of seatbelts. And again, uh, I just uh, send the message out to people that it is really important for your own safety and other people's safety to wear seatbelts. Um, I was going to touch on e-scooters, but I think a number of people have raised that. Um, I, did, I did have a bit of a note here, do I want to see grown adults riding around on a kid's toy? Um, 
I don't acting speaker, but of course it's their right to do so. I don't know that I would get on an e-scooter and scoot up and down the, the street to catch a bus or a train or something like that. Um, but I know that a lot of people have fun on them and good, good on them. I support them and I support this bill and I commend it to the House.